call the roll. Glenn Whitley, County Judge. Here. Roy C. Brooks, Commissioner Precinct 1. Present. Marty Van Ravensway, Commissioner Precinct 2. Gary Fickus, Commissioner Precinct 3. Here. J.D. Johnson, Commissioner Precinct 4. Here. Constitutes a quorum. Thank you. Our invitation this morning will be delivered by uh, Reverend Stanley Manikas from the Union Gospel Mission, Fort Worth. Um, after the invocation, please remain standing for our pledges. Let us pray. O Lord, this day direct us in the ways of justice, mercy, and compassion, upon which is built the palace, the place for all of our citizens to live in the peace and harmony. We remember the words inspired from the psalmist, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path. Let the deliberations of our gifted and skilled county commissioners be guided by the light from that lantern with righteousness, justice, and mercy. May they lead the people of this county for the common good. May they provide relief for the least of these, our brethren, remembering the necessities of all citizens. Guide each one to lead with integrity and honesty, transparency and righteousness. According to the divine principle of righteous governance, is taught by our Savior who said, Render unto Caesar the things of Caesar and unto God the things of God. We ask, therefore, your blessing on this day as we set out to do your bidding, as we serve the citizens of our county. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the one state under God, one and indivisible. Got the first two. Thank you. We need a tune. Next song. <laughs> no. We're not singing any song. <laughs> what do you think, David? What? A Tarrant County song. We can sing it up here. Knock yourself out. Commissioner Fickus is lobbying for a Tarrant County song to go along with our pledges. <laughs> Those of us up here who have no singing ability uh, are against it. And even Commissioner Brooks, who I've heard and can sing a little bit, I don't think is real supportive. A little bit. Just Moving on, on. <laughs> Mr. Manius. Thank you, Your Honor. Your Honor, members of court, we have three items uh, as it relates to the agenda that we need to uh, remove from the agenda this morning. The first one is under the administrator section. This is item A2, an exception to the travel policy for Precinct 2. Also under purchasing, items H1 and H2. We're going to ask that these two items be held for one week. Then finally, members of court, uh, Ms. Henderson, the county clerk, would like to make an announcement at this time. Ms. Henderson. Good morning, Judge and Commissioners. Good morning. Several weeks ago, I briefed the court regarding a service that I plan to implement to help reduce mortgage fraud here in Tarrant County. Today, I'm ready to announce that Property Fraud Alert is now available for service to the public. A new hyperlink and page have been added to the Tarrant County website explaining the service and providing a link to a customized subscription page managed by Fiddler Technologies. If you go to the Tarrant County website, scroll down the right side of the screen, you'll see the menu button for Poppy Fall Alert. It takes you to that page, and there's a link from there where you can subscribe to the service. It is an internet-based service that notifies our citizens each time there is recording activity with their name on the respective document. This is voluntary and subscription-based at no charge to the subscriber. Flexible alert notifications are sent by email or telephone as specified by the subscriber. Property Fire Alert Service and Alert Call Center is managed by the vendor, which is Fiddler Technologies. So no additional county employees were required, nor no special equipment was required. I'm convinced that I have the best staff in this state. 
I want to thank Jeff Nicholson, my chief deputy, who is home today, recovering from surgery. I know he's watching this presentation by internet. And I want to thank Galen Neal, my recording manager, who uh, her expertise, she and Jeff helped push this service. They worked with the vendor very closely, pushing them to bring it uh, uh, to make it available as quickly as possible to our constituency. I also want to thank Steve Smith and the IT staff for their cooperation. And GK and his staff for assisting this presentation to make, to make this report to you today. Once again, Tarrant County shines and proves to be an example of county government at its very best. We're the first county in Texas to be able to offer this service to our constituents. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. that answer any questions? Any questions? Thank you very much, Suzanne, for being proactive. Court members, you have before you the minutes of our June 2nd meeting. Move approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. <coughs> Next, you have before you our, in our proclamations and resolutions. Uh, we have a memorial resolution for the uh, passing of uh, Commissioner Brooks's mother, Marion Norris Brooks. Marie. I'm sorry, Marie Norris Brooks. Um, and I will move uh, for its uh, ratification. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? I understand that it was a very nice service. Uh, I was out of town and apologize for not being able to make it. But uh, I, I so would just like to give my thanks to the entire Tarrant County family for all your kindnesses during that period. We are family and I appreciate being supported by my family. Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Judge. Uh, you have before you the consent agenda. Move approval. Second. second. We have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes uh, unanimously. Commissioner Brooks, I think you have uh, some folks here that you might like to introduce at this time. I've got some very, very special guests this morning. The court is probably aware, because this is the third year we have done this program, that uh, each year the uh, fifth year class of the C5 Youth Foundation, formerly known as Camp Coca-Cola, uh, study comes to this community to have their their culminating activity. The, the culminating activity is after five years of intensive leadership development training and community uh, service in their local communities. These kids are from communities across the state of Texas. Uh, their capstone activity is to investigate some matter of pressing concern in a community. The past three years it has been this community, Tarrant County, and to use the skills that they have acquired in their five years of leadership development to intensively study that problem, to come up with uh, their own recommendations for solving it, and to put together presentations to uh, inform local stakeholders as to how they see uh, the solving of this problem. The first year, they studied uh, infant mortality in Tarrant County. Last year, it was ex-offender re-entry. This year, they are tackling the high school dropout problem. Uh, their presentations will be this coming Friday morning at 11 a.m. at the Tarrant County Public Health Department building at Rosedale and Main Street. Uh, their work is always excellent, and I am pleased to welcome this year's medallion class of the C5 Youth Foundation to Fort Worth, Tarrant County, Texas. Y'all stand up. <laughs> In
in addition, we have the executive director of the C5 Youth Foundation, Mr. Dave Nobby, and the program director for uh, uh, the campership experience. I don't know what your title is, Sharon, but Sharon Aguilar. Welcome, boys and girls, and I wish you a successful week, and I hope you enjoy the baseball game tonight. What ball game are they going to? Whatever's happening at the Rangers Stadium, where, where you will throw out the first pitch. And hopefully not bounce And hopefully it. not uh, throw it in the dirt in front of the plate. Who's catching? Well, I thought you were pissed. Yeah, you're doing that. I'm doing that. Well, we, that, that ranger horse they have, that horse can't see, though. And it, the only way that horse even comes close to catching it is if you happen to hit him. And, uh, but I, the last couple of years I've hit it. I hadn't, I hadn't uh, bounced it. I hadn't bounced it yet, but I keep saying that, and i got a feeling that there's a uh, – I'm going to go out and practice a little bit this afternoon we'll last, get through here. Last year, I was catcher for you at the Cats, and you do need to go practice a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that, that was a problem. See, at least the, the horse makes a pretty big target to hit. You know, I can, I can say, well, I hit the horse. Uh, it's not quite, you know, when, when somebody's actually there with a the mitt, it's a little bit harder sometimes to, <laughs> to hit that. We've ordered Let's a bigger start. backstop. You ordered a bigger backstop? Yes, sir, I, I do appreciate that. The Make the net go up a little bit higher just in case. Moving right along, uh, the next item on our agenda is a public hearing. Renee, if you, or Ms. Lamb, if you'll come on down, we'll, uh, we'll get into that. Thank you, Judge. I'm here this morning to request that Commissioner's Court conduct a public hearing to consider the placement of an always stop at the intersection of J. Rendon and Canyon Pass Trail. It's located in Precinct 1. This request is due to a um, call that we received from a subdivision at that, that's located at that intersection. They asked that we investigate the need. The county engineer has done so and has determined we need to always stop. This is a public hearing. I'll open the public hearing at this time and ask if there's anyone here who wishes to speak to this matter. I know I have two audience participation forms about this, so. Uh, let me begin uh, by asking Sally, is it McClone? If you would please uh, repeat your name and address uh, for the record. My name is Sally McClone. I live in the Santa Fe Trails Development. My address is 12805 Daybreak Trail. Um, I'm here today to request the Commissioner's Court approval of this agenda item. Um, our subdivision is about 40 occupied homes. There's been numerous accidents at that 90 degree turn on Jay Rendon. It's a very sharp turn. It's poorly marked. And during the grow growing season, the visibility triangle is obscured. I think that the stop signs would prevent um, many of the accidents where uh, our neighbors stop to pick up their mail um, and also save on the property damage we've um, had to our landscaping and the entry gates to the subdivision. Um, action is required uh, for placement of these signs, and I would ask that you do so And um, after the public hearing is closed, and I thank you in advance for your approval. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Sarah. Uh Next is uh, Dave. Is it? Tennessean? Tennyson. Tennyson. My name is Dave Tennyson. I also live in the Santa Fe Trails Edition at 3801 Eagles Nest Trail. Uh, I am here in support of the court to place those stop signs. We currently only have one at that intersection coming out of our edition. We are the only one traffic that stops at that corner. Uh, as Sally mentioned, it is severely devastating to uh, vision. There is, there is absolutely uh, either direction on J. Rendon Road. You cannot see around the corners. And people come around that corner and cut that corner. And I'm afraid we're, we're just a matter of time. So far uh, in the last two years, all the accidents there have just been property damage. But I'm afraid uh, one of these days we're going to have a head-on or a T-bone accident. 
and we'll have a fatality accident because of the people don't drive the speed limit. If we can get stop signs in there, it will slow them down with proper marking. And I appreciate your support. And I'd also ask if there's a way to expedite that to get it taken care of as quickly as we possibly can. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else here today wishing to speak to this matter? Just me. There are none, and I will close the public hearing and invite comments from um, from the court. This is truly a dangerous intersection, and it's unique in that you come at it from around a curve in both directions, and the sight lines are very poor. And I think that uh, uh, transportation has come up with the proper solution. So I would move approval of placing an always stop at the intersection of Jay Rendon and Canyon Pass Trail. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, any other discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. The Honor, Ms. McMillan is going to handle the first item on the administrator's section. Uh, might I just state that we'll, we'll get those uh, stop signs up immediately. Thank you, Commissioner. Judge Commissioners, uh, you may recall a few weeks back that we briefed the court on um, a new program that the U.S. Department of Commerce has recently established providing for an expedited process for revising and expanding the foreign trade zones in our area. At that time, there were some um, concerns about how the two foreign trade zones we have in our area, which is the DFW Airport Foreign Trade Zone, um, Zone Number 39, and the Alliance Corridor Trade Zone, which is Zone Number 196, would work in terms of their service areas, which areas they would incorporate. <coughs> Since that time, representatives of the DFW um, Airport and Alliance Foreign Trade Zones have met and they have come to an agreement on the different service areas. In the packets, there is a map that depicts the boundaries of the service area for the Alliance Corridor Foreign Trade Zone, and then all other areas within Tarrant County would be in the service area of the DFW Airport Foreign Trade Zone. I do want to recognize that um, here today is Christina Wood and Marlene Hamer from the DFW Airport Foreign Trade Zone and Steve Becking from the Alliance Foreign Trade Zone. As you may recall, um, it typically takes about 12 to 18 months right now to um, get a foreign trade zone application through the federal government process. This new expedited, expedited process is estimated to cut that time to about 90 days. Hmm. Uh, but being in this process does not mean that we're not going to have some approval. We will still have those applications coming to our jurisdictions for review on a case-by-case -case basis. We're requesting now that Commissioner's Court approve the request for Tarrant County to be a part of the designated service area for the DFW Airport Foreign Trade Zone and the Alliance Foreign Trade Zone and participate in the new Alternative Site Management Initiative for expedited approvals within these foreign trade zone programs. Move for approval. Second. A motion and second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank Has you. Denton County taken action on this year? They're included, but there's something included in the map that goes up into that area, both um, Alliance and... Uh, Will they have yeah. to take action? Or have yeah, they? they'll take action on their own. But they haven't yet. Um, I think it was scheduled for today, but it was pulled because uh, Commissioner Heath is not going to be present. It'll be probably on next Tuesday. And I know Dallas County has already taken action. Thank you. Members of court, we have one final item. Is item three. We're requesting that the commissioner's court receive and file the administrative order from the district judges of Tarrant County, which formalizes the reappointment for a two-year period of our county auditor, Renee Tidwell. Really? Did, did we vote on the last issue? No, we're not. Uh, yes, we, yes, we did. Okay. This next one is questionable, isn't it? <laughs> It's a little dicey. <laughs> I'm a always have something worse. <laughs> 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 I recommend we do this. <laughs> <laughs> I move approval. 
<laughs> we have a we have a motion and a second. You got two motions and no second. <laughs> well, he'll have the motion and I'll give him the second. second. There you go. Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Sorry, Roy, Thank I you. Hear the motion. <laughs> Glad to have you back. Now she's going to come up and talk to us. She might not have talked to us if we had not approved. Yeah, well, it might yeah. have been questionable where we would have gone had y'all not <laughs> reconsidered your first thought. Um, we have two items for the court's um, consideration this morning. The first item is to receive and file the auditor's report of controls over the county's fleet card and fuel management services. Uh, back in the fall of last year, we looked at the county's pumps and the county's cards and had a report at that time. At the, and then we've now come forward and looked at strictly at the fuel man system. Pretty much the problems in both systems were the same. Um, the county has worked to uh, have unique PIN numbers and to issue cards to individuals on the county side. Uh, we're hoping that the county administrator's office and, and an auditor and purchasing, we can work together to get some new policies on the use of the fuelman cards and have unique PIN numbers and have the cards issued to individuals <coughs> just so we have a little greater control um, as it is now. Uh, things are somewhat weak in the control area. As I, under, as I look through the report, and as I had recalled, right now the, the cards stay with the vehicles. Yes, the fuelman cards. Um, does the information not, would the system itself provide the opportunity for someone to, first off, enter something that indicates who's their number, who's fueling the, the vehicle, and then secondly, to indicate what vehicle they're fueling? It is my understanding that the fuelman system would accommodate cards being issued to in unique individuals with unique PIN numbers, which is but what we're But then will they be able to indicate what unique vehicle that they're fueling? Say, for example, if it's somebody I don't who's know not they, driving the same vehicle all right. the time. I don't know if it does or not. I know when we met with the individuals from the fuelman, uh, Mr. Holland, uh, the Barney Holland Company, the system's pretty seemed like it would accomplish whatever we needed. It's a matter of, of making those choices and then um, having them do that. I, but I would hate to speak. I would have to get back with you on that because I don't know the answer to that. As we kind of look at that, I, you know, that would we'll just make it a requirement. Well, that's one of the concerns. I mean, I just I want to hear it because it took me a while to understand why it stayed with the vehicle, but then it kind of it made sense. Since then we could track exactly you know, when should this vehicle be being refueled. When you give it to an individual, then at that point in time, if you're not tying it back to a vehicle, then you're, you're perpetually no. allowing more. I can't speak to the fuel man process, but I have a, had occasion to use the uh, county system that has been reconfigured with individual cards and PIN numbers. And what you do is to first use the vehicle card, the card that is assigned to that unique vehicle, and, and scan that so it registers the vehicle. It then asks for your employee ID number and your PIN number. So you not only know what vehicle is being fueled, but you know who, who fueled it. Okay. And, this, the and the I'll second look. part of our recommendation is that we do get reports out of the fuel man system today that we're talking about and that those reports are reviewed by appropriate supervisory personnel so that they can look and verify the reasonableness of the transactions being made by people who are under their... Um, well, that was the other concern is you, we went from originally having 75 to having 270-something. 237, I think is what it was, right. But we started with 75, correct. And um, without necessarily having gone through purchasing to get those additional <laughs> cards. So, okay. Um, do I have a motion? No. Move Approval. Approval. A second. We have a motion and a second to receive and file. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. And our next item is to request the Commissioner's Court to receive and file the investment report for Tarrant County Treasury Funds <coughs> for the quarter ended March 31st, 2009. <laughs> Um, we're still pursuing um, safe, but uh, safe investments, trying to maximize earnings. We placed a 40 million CD last week with Chase for nine months for 0.71. Oh my goodness! Uh, but the rules are up today from 0.33 to 0.38. So um, hot dog. Still, still 
the dollar is strengthening and there's some discussion of rates rising so but we're we're not seeing anything that we can take advantage of uh, and as we had some of our agency notes that we purchased last year as those mature we're not going to be able to replace them with the two and three percent interest that we had had and so the CDs have actually been the most attractive offering that my understanding that the 250000 has now been extended past December 31st? I don't know that. If you do, then... I, I believe that it has been, okay. and so we might... I know that's been a, a fear of not going past January with more than 100. I think we can now look to go past that from that standpoint. I don't think they extended the... Um, they did not extend the unlimited mm. protection which they had, it's my understanding that they did not extend the unlimited protection, but that they did extend the 250000 on interest-bearing CDs. So if that's the case, we might keep that in mind as we do our CDs. And that unlimited is that unlawful. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? G.K., did you have a question? No, sir. No, sir. Please vote. Thank motion you. passes unanimously. <clears throat> uh, he's coming up, so I mean, I guess that means you want to do it now. I got it here. Might as well do it now. We have a uh, subrogation recovery check in the amount of fifty-four thousand dollars, requesting authorization for the county auditor to cash this check. Move approval. Second. We have a motion to second. Any further discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Ms. Worthy. Move to receive and file the personnel agenda. Second. We have a motion and a second to receive and file the personnel agenda. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Ms. Brewer. We have three items for your approval this morning. The first is a contract for services with the Ingham Syst In Engine Systems for provision of professional software services for Public Health Department's Advanced Practice Center. And this is in relationship to our school health surveillance program that we're already doing. It's an update to the system. Move approval. Second. A motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Our second item is a cons uh, approval of a consent form for designating the Public Health Department's school health surveillance system as a promising practice for pandemic influenza preparedness. Move approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. And our third item is acceptance of the Texas Department of State Health Services Community Preparedness Section Bioterrorism Discretionary Fund Projects. And this is phase two. We brought you phase one a few weeks ago. This is additional unspent funding from the state for public health preparedness. Um, oh, and so it's gone back out. Second. A motion is second. Uh, so this is money. What restrictions are on this money that we received? It, it's um, public health preparedness funding, so it has to be used in the um, categories that we already received funding for, like epidemiology, lab. Like buying equipment? Um, it can, but it's already gone through the approval process with the state in terms of we've submitted what we need. and they You've already, already told them what you're going to do with yes. it. Yes. Yes. Okay. We have a motion to second. Any other discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Purchasing. Was Jack on vacation? We haven't seen him in a couple of weeks, have we? He's, uh, he's always on vacation, Judge. Uh, <laughs> work? Is, is this on? I'm sorry. <laughs> he's, on his, he's on his way uh, up here right now. <laughs> I should make this quick. I no, clean my eyes out real quick, though, and get on up here. So. No, he's uh, he had a death in the family, so he couldn't make it today. But he, he will be back next next Tuesday. Uh, we have uh, we have two items for your consideration today. The uh, the first item will be item number three on the agenda. This is bid number two thousand nine dash zero nine five. This is for the purchase of portable carts for the uh, for emergency response for the public health department. 
Uh, we're requesting uh, that the award be made to W and W Custom Care per unit price. Move approval. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Our second item is bid number 2009-102. This is the for the purchase of ASTM Type 1 Portland cement. Uh, all precincts, the, we're recommending the award to Ash Grove, Texas uh, at $114 a ton. We'll also mention this is uh, only a 90-day contract. How green is this cement? This is not green, uh, Commissioner. This is uh, this should be Type One Portland. We still in the lawsuit with them? Yes, this was the only bidder. We didn't specify any kind of particular cement, but this is the only bidder. Move approval. <laughs> And you did say it was only a 90-day contract. Yes, okay. That's correct. I'll second the motion. Please vote. Motion fails. Thank you. Now, for those of us who need cement, what do we do? We have the contract that we currently have. Can we still buy off? The contract, contract expired uh, May 15th. They had a higher price for that contract, too. That's correct. The, uh, the price of the expired contract was uh, $129 a ton. Uh, this one is at $114. And we have a, we've identified a need for about 1,200 tons uh, at this point. Since the, since the vote failed, if there's any vote for reconsider, Move it has reconsideration. to come from someone who voted against it. He made a motion. I don't believe it has to be seconded by anyone unless you would like to go ahead and... What was his motion? His motion is that we reconsider the vote. I'll second the motion. We have a motion and a second to reconsider the vote. Uh, please vote. <coughs> We're going to reconsider the vote. Um, Commissioner Johnson, would you like to make a motion? I move approval. I will second. Please vote. Under extreme protest. Motion you passed. Put that in the record. <laughs> yes. I mean, again, again from what it, what it comes down to is, is you've got a building that you're trying to put up, and if we don't pass this, everything comes to a halt. So, um, and it's a 90-day contract. Yes, sir, it's 90 days. That's okay. Correct. Well, our legislature failed to take any action on, uh, on bills that would give us the authority to do what it is that we've been wanting to do. Let's not say we're completely dead in the water there. Let's not. Well, there's always hope. Thank you. <laughs> I need to move on. Uh, transportation services, Mr. Skinner. <laughs> Members of the court, we are requesting your approval of amendment number three to an agreement uh, related to improvements to FM 1938. This uh, agreement is with the uh, Denton County and the cities of South Lake, West Lake, and Keller. Make a motion to approve. What does this do? This amendment uh, simply uh, allocates the Commissioner's discretionary funding uh, according to a schedule. I know you understand where we're at on this, but yeah. I want to be sure that we allocated one half of that money on phase one, the other half on phase two. I know what this says, but I'm sure. telling you, half on phase one, half on phase two. And that funding is being monitored. Uh, okay. To, to I don't want to see one penny more let, spent on phase one. Let me be clear. This allocates money from your discretionary fund. It does. Okay. Is there semen involved? <laughs> 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 At no 
no comment. <laughs> I, he hasn't got a second yet. He's going to get off second. It just, but I'm glad you asked that question. Yeah. Uh, what's the issue? I, I, cannot, uh, I cannot answer it. I believe that this, this funding is actually for engineering. Uh, engineering. engineering and design. It's for environmental analysis, sub, subservice engineering study, and fees for engineering design. All I can say is you better be glad there's no cement involved. <laughs> we have a motion and a second. The motion is not exactly as is probably stated in our minutes, so be sure that you add to that that the money is to be split 50-50 between phase one and phase two so that there won't be any disruption. Okay, just, just for a point of clarification, the Commissioner's Court had previously approved this project up to a million dollars. What this does is simply lay out uh, the schedule to, for payment uh, past this current fiscal year. And Commissioner Fickus, what, what you've indicated is that 50 percent or no more than 500,000 should be expended in phase one and 500,000 in phase two. Correct. Okay. There, there's nothing in this document well, then let's withdraw this document phase and change one it, and phase if that's two. what we've got to do. Because that, that is not, he is withdrawing the motion, and so we will hold this for whatever period of time we need to hold it. Randy, we know where we've been on this from day one, I think. We, we yes, okay. and we, we had uh, And I don't know why we doesn't say that, but I, I don't want to get into a, any, any type of uh, discussion or argument sure. with uh, other parties. We'll bring this in soon because we're allocating three hundred thirty-three thousand dollars a year. That that we're going to allocate. We've already done three hundred thirty-three or more, and then we're going to allocate another three hundred thirty-three this sure. year. Because yes. it ain't going to happen. We can uh, make it. Uh, make Commissioner, we'll bring this back to you next week with that corrected wording in the contract. Okay. So the motion has been removed, as has the second. So we'll take no action on this today. I'm just trying to protect us from sure. getting sued. Thank you. By somebody. Uh, the next item on the agenda is in a local agreement with regards to uh, North Western Hills and uh, repair and maintenance of North Tarrant Parkway. Commissioner Fickus? Yes, I'm. <laughs> I to approve that. That this project and that thing. Second. Well, motion and second. I think Commissioner Johnson has a question. No cement involved. In it's this all thing. cement. <laughs> 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 it's all <laughs> it's all <laughs> no, it's all asphalt. <laughs> it's all asphalt. Are there any other questions or discussion? Not appearing. Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Are there any appointments today? Okay. Um, we have several bonds uh, to approve today, and um, I think each one of you were handed out a list of that. Uh, so the first, yes, the first group is uh, to receive and file the official bonds of the following reserve deputy constables which have been approved by the respective constable for the relevant precinct. You see precinct one, uh, those by uh, Constable Jerry Crowder, precinct five by Constable uh, Sergio De, De Leon, precinct six by Constable uh, Joe Cubes, uh, precinct seven by Constable Clint Burgess. Move approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. And then we have um, the bond for Chief Deputy Constable Joseph Ortega, uh, Chief Deputy, Deputy Constable Precinct 6. Move approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. You have before you the claims, including the addendum. 
Move approval of claims, including the addendum. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the claims, including the addendum. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Briefing items, Mr. Manion? Your Honor, we do not have any briefing items at this time. Then at this time, we will, uh, the Commissioner's Court will now recess the open session and proceed to closed session to discuss items exempted under uh, sections 551.071072074076 and 087 of the Texas Government Code.
on closed uh, session and there being no business, we're adjourned. Cool. Sign uh, Show Commissioner Fickus has been in the room. Sign Bill Hill has been covered with concrete.